and it's that balance between the two characters and the two individuals. You're going, this is your show. This is your ship. <laughs> and go, okay. I, get it. I used to have my own ship. Uh, Slipped into character there for a second, I think. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen him in Battlestar Galactica, The Umbrella Academy, and The Man in the High Castle, and now you can watch him on the bridge of USS Discovery as Commander Rayner. Callum Keith Rennie, welcome to Trek Untold. Thank you for having me. So I got to ask you here, first question, you know, I've, we've seen a few episodes now of the fifth season here, and I'm curious to know, have you been checking out any of the fan response on social media about your appearances so far? A bit. Like I'm going, like reading uh, reviews of certain episodes or uh, what's, yeah, so... Some, not tons, but it seems positive what I've seen. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely gotta be like a weird thing, right? Because you're coming in now. This is essentially the last season of Discovery. You're the new kid on the block, and you've now got a short amount of time to kind of endear yourself to the fans. And your character, let's say, you know, of of Commander Rainer, he's maybe not the best, uh, maybe not the most endearing at first. <laughs> no, he's not. And I mean, that was some of the fun to play. Where I'm not sure if I want to be liked very much. I wasn't. The, like go oh, maybe I'm supposed to be hated I wasn't sure so it wasn't it wasn't the uh, trying to be liked wasn't part of it and uh, and through the writing because I didn't see where all of it was going all of the time so you go oh it was written in that he there's a warmth and a development as he goes so I I'm, I picked the right um, angle to come in at it I would definitely agree with that. And, you know, looking at it from kind of a modern Star Trek perspective, to get a little bit nerdy here for a second, Callum, uh, you know, Admiral Vance a few seasons ago was kind of like the new jerk in Star Trek everybody loved to hate. Uh, and then Picard, season three, we had Captain Shaw, who ultimately, you know, these are characters we all learn to love. Uh, and now Rainer, for lack of a better term, he's the latest dingus now. It's kind of ruffling some feathers in Starfleet uh, and frustrating some fans. But eventually you're going to make us fall in love with him. And we're already starting to get to that point. Uh, so, you know, what's it like for you to kind of play these heels? Do you enjoy playing a character like this who starts out as kind of one mean way and transforms into something else? Well, I mean, it's not. Do I like it? It's yes. <laughs> it's uh, well, because there's a journey for him. So it's nice to start in one place and get to another rather than be stuck in a spot. So he gets to grow through through the through the through the episodes and the story. But to start off, much like um, coming into anything where you're the new kid in school or and uh, you don't know who you're going to get along with and who's going to be your ally, who's going to be in a um, uh, an enemy. So I came into the show with that, with a certain chip on my shoulder going, I don't know who I'm supposed to like or who I'm going to like, uh, how the writing is going to play out. So it was keep your keep your guard up be as stoic as you can and and see what happens and what develops but start mm -hmm. out this time he definitely has a real presence to him and i'm loving what i'm seeing so far uh, but i want to back it up for a second calm and uh, i want to ask about how you book the gig uh, so you know we know that trek is very secretive about their audition process so i'd love to hear a little bit about what your audition process was like and when you realized that this was actually a star trek job if you didn't know that up front well, uh, the process was they offered it to me. Easy day on the job. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so that process, you know, I'm I'm pretty good at offers. I don't, I usually don't blow those. Um, auditions, sometimes I can get those, right? Um, yeah, no, it was, it was presented as, and here's a, here's some material, maybe watch some episodes or seasons and, and see if this is something that's up your alley, if you, if you consider it and, and. And I did because the first episode was full of action and adventure. And I got to, you know, I was a, a Starfleet commander. Like, like uh, it was great. Yeah, I mean, let's talk a little bit about that now because you get to be not only a Starfleet captain, now commander. Uh, you also get to wear some fancy looking ears as a Kelleron. Uh, so I'd love to kind of talk about your wardrobe and that makeup. I mean, what is that makeup like? Have you done anything like that for previous work? 
I haven't done prosthetics very much. I mean, I think I did uh, five people you meet in heaven. I think they aged me like to be 80. And so that was a long process, but it was really only for one day. The ears were a bit of creating the mold, going to Los Angeles and having them build a thing. And then every day was like a, trying to get the time down to get them on, which was which came down like it, got, it was pretty quick. But the ha, it, it became at time, you know, at times it became the the type of glue and whatnot became, became an irritant. There was it, sometimes it was painful. Um, it uh, it was a thing. It was just like and. I wasn't used to sitting in a makeup chair for that long every uh, morning and getting up that early. So there was issues about it that I hadn't really put into, <clears throat> I thought about, but I didn't really understand, like you're there early. <laughs> I'm just curious to know like how much of your actual ears were exposed and how much was covered. I mean, could you actually hear anything? Um, I mean, that's the thing where I go, is this going to be weird to, no, all the hearing was fine and the whole ear is covered. Mm. So I have a cup of them. <laughs> oh, very cool. All right. Uh, so kind of walk us through your first day on the set. Now you're walking around with your ears all covered up and everything. Uh, you know, what's it like for you to walk through these enormous sets and just meet your fellow cast members who, you know, really the story here is that they've known each other for years. Like we said earlier, you're the new kid on the block. So what's it like for you to walk into this set? Is it a welcoming environment? Is, does it feel daunting to now be part of this massive universe? Uh, how do you take it all in? Well, because there's the part where you dissociate from reality and go i don't you know because i don't know any you know there's a it's odd because i mean i was intimidated to put on the uniform there was parts of it that worked for me and parts that didn't um there there was getting toured around uh the the bridge and the stuff also intimidating because it, it's it just was, it just was. And uh, you're coming into something that's established and it's been going for four years. And it's just like, ah, oh, try not to mess it up too bad. Um, <laughs> there's all that stuff, just the, the neurotic uh, uh, actor stuff that we do. You go, how do I fit this? Uh, how will I fit this world? Um, all of it, it just every, you know, it's just, uh, it's uh, part of the process and go, and some of that, you go, what can I use and what can I lose to, mm. you know, um, in pr participation with Rainer, where you're meeting people and and going, how 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 do you how does this character get introduced? How 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 do you fit? How do you not fit? How does the uniform work? And it didn't work in some ways, and I needed all like things changed for my comfort or my move. Like I wanted to be able to move better. Mm. Uh, yeah, so there's just things as I was, as you go, you're just picking up and going. Yeah, but it was, it was, it was tough. I can't. Yeah. It's a, a easy uh, entrance. Now, we started to kind of talk about this a few moments ago. And I want to dig a little bit deeper here about who the character of Rainer is. Uh, I'm curious to know, like, what was your view of this character? I don't know if you had a chance to like look at the entire story arc of where he was going to go. And obviously, we're only going up to episode four here. Um, but you know, as far as who you think the character was, and did you draw like any real life inspiration for who this person was? Um, well, you're coming into a show with he he commanded a ship for thirty years, and um, and he's gotten demoted. You're coming in with a, a, a an amount of experience as an actor, and you're going, okay, I'm coming onto this thing with this amount, and you're going, to, so you're trying to find things that that you you go, okay, what you're, and I'll always come into things going, you know, what would work better, you know, how I do it, um, <laughs> so you're just finding the places of 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 your one zone, uh. It, stepping on toes or intrusions or um suggestions let's say um of <laughs> uh how it works for you um so coming in like and i didn't get the like i think i was told i think michelle told me the um the arc of the of the character but i only had the one script to go on so mm. uh, each one came out i was it was uh new to me and mm. And you're playing within that and going, oh, OK, that's what's happening now. You know, the kind of interesting thing we have, too, is the characters of Burnham and Rainer. They do kind of share a similar story, just almost at different sides of a perspective here, uh, which makes for a really interesting on-screen relationship. Um, and 
you know, I wonder again, going back to like real life things, essentially this character you're playing is a veteran of things. He knows this world he's been around and Burnham is this hot shot. And now, you know, she's the one in charge. It's like a mentoring role essentially, but this is a person who doesn't want to be mentored. Yeah. Uh, and that feels like it's kind of a real life thing too, as well. Yes. Cause he's coming in with the, uh, um, yeah. Cause you go, I, yes, you want to fit in and you don't. And it's hard, to, it, and it's that balance between the two characters and the two individuals. You're going, this is your show. This is your ship. <laughs> and go, okay, I, get I used to have my own ship. Uh, Slipped into character there for a second, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so those things were fun to play. And I think the show very much needed that antagonism or somebody who's maybe not going to hear it all the way that they're supposed to. And and go uh, i don't get it hmm. uh, old school yeah that's a good way to put it now uh, episode four face the strange this is a real uh to quote another franchise a very timey-wimey episode uh and i'm curious as a performer is that jarring for you to do because this is an episode where sets have to change pretty dramatically outfits have to change for the other actors around you uh, it feels like they can kind of make production draw on or drag on a little bit longer was this something that kind of like presents a unique set of challenges for an actor um, I mean, some of the jumping around in the science talk was a lot for me. Like, yeah. cause, I mean, I'm not that guy. Because it was pretty much a two-hander for, for me and Burnham in 504, it just, that was fun and easy to to, to play in. And uh, Lee was such a great director of, of action and the, the fun of it and get you into the moment that all of that stuff was covered. And there was because of the the jumps in, and some of the history I didn't know and what why were we back there and all of that and just leaned into I don't know and <laughs> what because I didn't get it because you need someone not to get it I mean I watched it again last night and it was just like I thought it was an amazing episode with so much stuff going on and just like wow and some really beautiful moments and and a development of Rainer in that world and and the show was shown in such a uh, in great light. It was very good. And of the four I've seen so far, I think this is my favorite for the reasons you just mentioned, just really seeing the development and kind of throwing us back here. Uh, but you did mention the techno babble, or in some cases, people call it techno babble. Has that been difficult for you to wrap your head around sometimes? Some of the dialogue itself is, yeah, it's like tough for me. Like, it's just not my uh, jam. So, but I, and I worked on it a lot, play, so I could just say it and get it out. But, and you're doing stuff with imaginary screens that aren't there, which, uh, you know, I'm not from that world, but I guess I am now. Um, so all of that stuff was a learning part for me, where it's just like, I, you know, okay, um, I may kind of understand some of it, and a lot of it I don't. When Stamets is talking, I check out because I just do, because he's got, there's so much information from another, you know, that science stuff. And we didn't want to call it babble, but go, I don't know what he's talking about. Um, wow, what, you know, old school. Now, now what do we shoot at next? What do we get? Um, he just wants that. Now, you guys found out last March that this was going to ultimately be the final season of Discovery, which you didn't know walking into this show here. Uh, and to kind of paraphrase from Deep Space Nine for a moment here, since this is the end of the series as a whole, without giving away spoilers, let's just talk about you personally now. Uh, for you, Callum Keith Rennie, what did you leave behind on Discovery after you guys wrapped? And what did you take away with you from this experience? Um, what did I leave behind? Hmm. Um, it's uh, it's funny because one, it's such a it's a year and a half ago, um, more so. Um, it was, I mean, for me, it was a very hard season. It was very hard um, because of just how it just was hard. I found it. I and, and trying to, and I worked hard and, and it's, it's odd. Cause I, I look at it and I, and I, it seems pretty smooth and I know how much um, effort I was, I was putting in there. And by the end of it, I was like uh, very, so grateful that everyone had been so supportive, so kind, so generous to me from uh, directors or executive producers, other actors. Um, it was just, um, that was amazing. And I just went, can't wait to come back and 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 be in it in a in a better way or for me like you just go okay now i'm now i see the landscape i know what i'm uh i'm into um and it was i saw there were there was a uh quite disappointed when i i didn't get to go oh because there's bits of stories that probably could have been tied up some flashbacks of other times 
some different things that could have been explored, but there would have been a comfortability in in being there that uh, I, I don't think I was able to find in the, the first season. Well, I'm glad to hear that one of the things you did take away was a pair of ears. So that's really cool either way. Um, and I really cannot wait to see how the season progresses. I'm loving your work on the show. Uh, and yeah, this has been awesome, Callum. Thank you so much for chatting today with us. Thank you very much. Trek Untold, the Star Trek podcast that goes beyond the stars, is powered by the Rageworks Podcast Network and affiliated with Nerd News Today.